using the first shift formula and Euler's formula. Find the Laplace transform function f of t equals t squared e to the 2t cosine of 3t. Now, the motivation behind this problem, I want to find a master recipe for the Laplace transform of our elementary functions. So the idea is I want to take a good clip off of our list of Laplace transforms, get them under one method. So here we're talking about functions like t to a power, exponentials to a number times t, and cosine and sine of a number times t. And then we can take any of those products. So the idea is going to be, except for the t to a power, the rest fall under the first shift rule. The only catch is, to see that, we're going to need complex analysis. Okay, let's review the first shift rule. What this says, take the Laplace transform of a function times e to the at. I evaluated s. What comes out is going to be the Laplace transform of that function, but now evaluated at s minus a. So, if I shift my function by multiplying by e to the at, I can move it to the outside by shifting by a and then we subtract. So that's our first shift formula. And here you can see, okay, for my f of t that we're looking at, e to the 2t is definitely going to get hit with that. The catch is, when we bring in complex numbers, we could also use it to take care of the cosine 3t. Okay, next step, Euler's formula. So this is something you should review. Okay, I'll just mention it, but we're not going to talk much about it. So here, we'll have e to the i t equals cosine of t plus i sine t. So what's happening here, a real number is going in for t, and then out is coming, okay, this complex valued function here. So we have real parts cosine t, imaginary part is sine t. This is gonna be what drives the part here with the cosine. Other ingredient that I need, complex valued integral. So the idea is going to be, I'm going to have a function that takes real numbers, returns complex numbers. Okay, you have an example of that right here. If we think of this as taking a real number, returning a complex number, that's exactly what we want here. Okay, then I can write that as capital F equals F1 plus I F2. So we split it into its real and imaginary parts. And note that F1 and F2 take a real number, return a real number. Then, if I want to take the integral of my capital F, okay, with respect to t, the way we do that is just to integrate your F1, integrate your F2, and then put them back together with the i out in front of the integral for F2. So, if I wanted to take complex valued integral of e to the i t, dt, then we would just integrate the cosine t dt, then plus i times integral sine of t dt. So the idea is you just do what you think you would. You ignore the i, pull it out, and then put it back in when you're done. So the idea is we're going to use these three ideas, put them together, and we get our master recipe. Now, two items and then examples. First item, I want to find the Laplace transform for complex valued functions. So we just use our definition for complex valued integral. So that would say, if I took Laplace transform of capital F, we work out the Laplace transforms F1, F2, okay, do those separately, then bring them back together to get your answer. With that, we'll have the following formula. Laplace transform of the real part of capital F equals the real part of the Laplace transform of capital F. So all this is saying, Okay, well, the real part of capital F is F1. So this is a Laplace transform of F1. Over here, okay, we're looking at the Laplace transform of capital F, taking the real part. So that's just going to be Laplace transform of F1. So all this says is Laplace transform of F1 equals Laplace transform of F1. Second item. Now, we'll extend our shift formula to complex Z. So where before we had e to the at, I want to replace that with an e to the zt. Okay, there's a little catch here. So the idea is, if you know, we're only defining our Laplace transform for real s. So if I use the shift 
to s minus z, where z is a complex number, that's not going to make any sense because it's out of the domain. Okay, we're going to still use it anyway because the argument that we're doing here is going to be heuristic, meaning it gets you to your answer, although it may leave some things unexplained. Okay, warm up. So this is the first example. I'm going to do the Laplace transform of cosine of 3t, evaluate it at s. Now, this one we've seen before, so this is just going to check our answer. What we're going to do is, first I note cosine of 3t by using Euler's formula. That's just going to be the real part of e to the i 3t. Then, okay, taking the real part on the inside, I can move that to the outside. So we're taking the real part of this Laplace transform. Then, using our shift formula, okay, e to the i 3t is the same as e to the i 3t times 1. So we're going to shift the function 1, it's Laplace transform, by 3i. So the Laplace transform of 1 shifted by 3i, so it's going to be s minus 3i. Then we take the real part. Now, Laplace transform of 1 is going to be 1 over s. So I'm taking 1 over s, evaluating s minus 3i. Then you'll note if I want this real part, I have to clear up the denominator. So I'll do that by multiplying by s plus 3i over itself. Then my denominator becomes s squared plus 9. Okay, s is always going to be a real number. So I'll have s squared plus 9, well, s plus 3i in the numerator. And then if I take the real part, we're going to be left with s over s squared plus 9. And that agrees with the answer that we had before. Next example, let's try the Laplace transform t squared cosine of 3t evaluated at s. Same procedure as before. We take cosine of 3t, replace it with e to the i 3t, then we take the real part. Now the t squared is real because t is always a real number here, so I can move that to the inside of the real function also. Then I could take taking the real part of this function as taking the real part of our Laplace transform. So we move it to the outside, then we can apply first shift formula. So our s becomes s minus 3i. Now we need the Laplace transform of t squared. The rule is Laplace transform of t to the n. It's going to be equal to n factorial over s to the n plus 1. So here we'll have Laplace transform of t squared equals 2 over s cubed. Now, by taking this and evaluating s minus 3i, we get, for our answer, the real part of 2 over s minus 3i cubed. Of course, we want to clean this up. So we'll simplify by multiplying by s plus 3i cubed over itself. In the denominator, we get s squared plus 9 quantity cubed. And I use the binomial theorem to expand our numerator. We only want the real part, so I'm only going to use the s cubed and the minus 27s. And then that's going to give us our answer. Now, to get to our problem, note we're just going to take okay, Laplace transform we have here, multiply by e to the 2t. So all I'm going to do is take this expression here, wherever I have an s, I replace it with s minus 2. So the answer to our problem is going to be this expression here. All right, now if you track through everything that we worked out, you're gonna have formulas for your Laplace transforms of these types of expressions in general. So what's the idea here? Well, first you're gonna work out Laplace transform of t to the n. Remember that's n factorial over s to the n plus one. And then you're gonna apply two shifts. First, you're gonna have the shift by a real number, okay, coming from your e to the at. Then you'll have another shift coming from your cosine or your sine. That's a shift by minus bi. And then everything else is just because we're trying to simplify so that I can take a real or an imaginary part. 